It's super. It's epic. It's super epic. Game journalism skill level 100. Out of a million. Super Epic The Entertainment War is a so-called metroidvania style platforming game with 16-bit style graphics set in a dystopian world where an evil corporation of literal pigs are the only video game development company in the world. You could say they were hogging the market. <laughs> only the highest quality entertainment on the Sorak space folks. The Swinefield Corporation has the sole aim of making bags of money for addicting the player to their free to play games to the extent that they are helplessly spending their hard earned money on microtransactions to further feed their addiction. I don't know about you Sorak Spaces but I can't even imagine a world like that. Maybe in 2020. The game is actually set in the year 2048 and the ruling company is called Regnant Corps. The word regnant meaning to reign over. I see what you did there, I'm like well clever get me into Oxford bruv. Regnant Corps operates under the Orwellian philosophy of work, play, spend. They are comprised of evil, ugly pigs dressed in ties. So I decided to send my CV over. The game is being published by Numskull who kindly provided me with a review code and was developed by Undercoders because they developed this game undercover probably. The short opening cutscene is reminiscent of Streets of Rage, you know, a big bad boss looking over the city over which he is a dictator. But have no fear, as a raccoon riding a llama is here to save video games. I want some of whatever the guy who came up with that idea was on. The gameplay consists of exploration and discovery of new areas, beating up enemies, upgrading and working out how to get to the next level. You've got three different main attacks at your disposal, a swift combo attack, an uppercut that launches enemies into the air and a smash attack that can break an enemy's block. There is a wide variety of enemies roaming around the offices that react differently to the attacks, although you'll find yourself using the combo and uppercut attacks the majority of the time. You also have rage attacks and a stamina level to maintain, which adds to the variety of ways you can dispense with your foes. I felt this story could have been a bit more engrossing and incorporated more frequently uh, in the gameplay to further break up the monotony of going from room to room, uh, beating many enemies and then running back through the levels again to try and find a key, which I can feel a little bit tedious at times. Uh, you're often trekking around a huge map dodging attackers in a desperate search for progression, so having a more engrossing story or something a bit different to break up the gameplay would have added that little bit of extra substance and given more motivation for the fight. It's important to note that I'm not the biggest fan of Metroidvania style games which may be skewing my opinion on this somewhat but lovers of the genre may like this aspect of the gameplay, you know, each to their own. Super Epic's USP relies heavily on satirising infamous modern day gaming industry practices like microtransactions, leisurely working environments that aim to keep employees in the office, you know, with all arcade machines everywhere and the like and shamelessly ripping games off, simultaneously giving gaming fans some treats in the form of nods to games of the past. Whilst I won't spoil everything here, there are many references to classic games like Castlevania and even Street Fighter, where you have a Hadouken-esque move that uses the same combo of button presses to perform. A nice, thoughtful touch. And it isn't the most difficult game in the world, but it does prompt you to put your problem solving hat on. To the extent where I had to make the most of my two brain cells to work out how to progress, which was a welcome challenge. Clobbering enemies gets you coins, the in-game currency, and performing combos grants you extra rewards. Coins can be used to buy some humorous new weapons such as the tennis racket, a stop sign, a guitar and a plunger. You can also spend your coins on upgrades to your health and the weapons themselves, stamina and your rage bar which is used to perform special moves which can be bought with gems. The bolstering of your characters and weapons works well and it feels rewarding and there are numerous paths you can take to level up in certain areas to suit your strategy. The platformer is well suited to handheld play, thus I'm very thankful I've got the Switch version over the alternatives when I'm whacking pigs over the head with a vacuum cleaner. As mentioned, it plays out in a 16-bit fashion, which works well even considering modern-day graphical capabilities in my view. The text of the cutscenes is written in retro fashion, which I really like, and the loading screen looks and sounds like the loading from a retro home computer system, so that is a nice hat-tipping gesture for fans of retro games. Super Epic fills up one huge map, but there are different levels, all colourful, all aesthetically pleasing, and the backgrounds are designed well to set the scene. There are some water sections too, but have no fear, there's not too much. Talking of liquid, you save the game by taking a whiz in the bogs, located throughout the map. It felt like I was on a night out rather than playing a game indoors as I was repeatedly scrambling for the toilet. 
Also, when you smash security cameras, burgers come out. Don't try this at home, kids. I learned the hard way. I received no burgers, but did receive a fine and a strong warning from the council. There's a plethora of enemies to fight, so extra points for that, including robots and a menagerie of animals like pigs, obviously, owls, bats, dogs, crocodiles, and a shark in a purple tire because he's a Sorax spacer? Most certainly not. Even animals aren't that silly. The boss fights at the end of each level are exciting and a major plus, although maybe a little too easy to defeat. The soundtrack is excellent and one of the game's main strengths. Composed by Sono Trigger and ranging from fast paced action to slower numbers, these tracks wouldn't feel out of place in a Sonic or a Mega Man game, which is praise if you've ever heard it. Clearly, plenty of effort has gone into creating the music. The tracks are catchy, pleasing your ears and sticking in your head while suitably providing the atmosphere. What makes Super Epic, well, fairly Super Epic, is the use of QR codes. Scattered around a few locations of the map are codes that can be scanned with a QR scanning device like a smartphone that directly lead you to mini-games such as parodies of well-known titles like Frogger, Temple Run and Flappy Bird. This cross-media functionality is clever, thinking outside the box, creative, and differentiates Super Epic from other Metroidvania experiences nicely. My only concern is with the concept of games conservation. If the website the codes direct you to go down, so will the minigames, won't they? Maybe this could have been built into the actual game with a smartphone-like graphic or something, and made more of an integral part of the story and gameplay, because it's one of the main draws of the game in my opinion, but it's treated like a peripheral. The main story purportedly lasts around 8 hours, but I've found it lasted longer with exploring all the game has to offer and naming for 100% completion. What would have shaved off some game time though would be the map having a key telling you what everything was, maybe a waypoint function, and certainly numbers on the elevators on the map so you don't have to guess which floor button to press to partially fast travel to your desired location. I've completed the main story to make the most comprehensive review possible and it seems to me that I received a bad ending, so there's seemingly replay value there too. Other than issues of not immediately finding what I needed to open a door or climb to the next platform, it wasn't overly difficult to complete, with the bosses all being beaten on my first try. You can spend in-game currency when you die to carry on from where you left off in another humorous dig at the current state of the gaming industry. Besides the story, Super Epic also has a roguelike mode, where the map generates for a different experience each time you play. A nice addition, further adding to the replay value. Overall, Super Epic is an impressive indie game with the passion and effort put in by the developers really shining through. Despite my main gripe of the game's overly repetitive nature, Super Epic is visually appealing, has an excellent soundtrack, a rewarding level up system with a wide range of enemies, intuitive outside the box thinking with clever use of QR codes and a couple of game modes to keep you busy, whilst its mocking of microtransactions and homage to more traditional gaming practices is both entertaining and commendable. Super Epic is available on the Nintendo Switch, which is my preferred option, also the PS4 and Steam, to be released on the 12th of December. Whilst it might not be everybody's cup of rosy, if you're a fan of the so-called Metroidvania game genre, certainly give this one a butchers, because they're pigs. Get it? I'll change for no one. I've been Sorax, watch this space. Work, spend, subscribe. Well, it's worth a go.